Hello, welcome and let's solve this equation together. Now, this is your degree six polynomial. You see that the highest power of this x is six when you expand this. And what it means is that we are expected to have six solutions for x. It's just so easy to work with. Let me show you how to do it. So we're going to begin with our solution. So we have x plus three to the sixth power is equal to two to the sixth power. Now, what do you do? You can choose to remember this is positive. Take it to the left side. So we have x plus three to the sixth power minus two to the sixth power is equal to zero. Now, remember that for every a to the power of m raised to power n is a to the power of m multiplied by n. Now, what it means is that this power of six, we can rewrite it. And that will give us x plus 3 raised to power of 3, then raised to power of 2. If you multiply the powers, obeying what we have here, it gives you back 6. Then do same here. We have 2 cubed is raised to power 2 and is equal to 0. Now, what did you observe? This value in the brackets and this one with these squares and the difference reminds you of a squared minus b squared equal to a plus b into a minus b. And that is your difference of two squares. So this is our a and this is our b. So we're going to apply this rule here to help us to solve. And if you are a returning viewer, I must say thank you very much for choosing to learn tutorials. And if you find this tutorial interesting, don't forget to give us a like, share with your friends and Let's know what to feel about this. Let's keep solving this to have. So we are going to have this, obeying what you have, gives us x plus 3 to the power of 3, then plus 2 cubed. That's the first one. Then we also have x plus 3 to the power of 3 minus 2 cubed is equal to 0. So what do you do? Just remember for every a, b is equal to 0. Either a is 0 or b is equal to 0. So we're going to apply it here. So we're going to work with the first statement. In that case, we are going to have x plus 3 to the power of 3 plus 2 cubed. And that is equal to 0. Now, what does this remind you of? It reminds you that for every a cubed plus b cubed, it's always equal to a plus b into a squared minus ab plus b squared. Now, this is your sum of two cubes. And that is what this looks like. This is your a, this is your b. So if you apply this rule here, we are going to now have x plus 3 for a, then plus 2, which is our b. And into our a is this. So let's change this bracket. So we're using the big one. We have x plus 3 squared minus, multiply these two. So we have 2, we multiply x plus 3. Then our b is 2, so we square it. Let's bring it down here. And everything is equal to 0. Now we keep solving. So we're going to now have x add this, it gives you 5 into, this will give us, now we're going to open up this. To open up this, we just need to remember for every a plus b to the power of 2, it is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So let's use it on this. We are going to have x squared plus, use 2 to multiply this, it gives you 2 times x times 3. Then square this, we have 3 squared. Then we are going to also use this negative to, to distribute it inside the bracket. And when you do that, you are going to have, this will give us negative 2x. This gives us negative 6. Then we have plus 2 squared will give us 4. And everything is equal to 0. So let's keep solving. We have x plus 5 into, this gives us x squared. Let's multiply this. This will give us 6x. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. 
minus 2x, negative 6 plus 4 gives us negative 2 is equal to 0. So we now have x plus 5 into, this gives us x squared. So we have 6x take away 2x gives us 4x. 9 take away 2 gives us 7 is equal to 0. We are going to take this first. So we have x plus 5 is equal to 0. To get x, subtract 5 from both sides. When you do that, x with this is gone. So x gives us negative 5. And this gives us the first value of x. Now let's bring this down to solve. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 7 is equal to 0. This is your quadratic equation. So we're going to apply the formula on this equation. Remember that your A is the quotient of x squared. Your B is the quotient of X and your C is the constant term. So let's recall the formula and I hope you've already given this a like. So let's keep doing this to have. So our X is negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. This is our quadratic formula. So we're going to apply this here and it gives us X is equal to negative 4 plus or minus square root of our b is 4 squared, so we have minus 4 multiplies a is 1 and c is 7. And this is divided by 2 times 1. So we have x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus. 4 squared gives us 16. If you multiply this, it gives us negative 28 and is divided by 2. So we are going to have x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus. Now, when you subtract this, it gives square root of negative 12, and that is divided by 2. So we are also having x is negative 4 plus or minus. This can be written as negative 1 times 12 is divided by 2. Keep solving. So we now have x is negative 4 plus or minus now, whenever you have root of a, b, is root of a multiplied by root of b for your principal root. So we can apply it here. So we have root of negative 1 times this is divided by 2. So we keep solving. This gives us x is negative 4 plus or minus. Whenever you have this square root of negative 1, it reminds you of imaginary unit i. So we replace with i. But you know that 12 has a perfect square in it. And the highest perfect square in 12 is 4. And when you multiply 4 by 3, it gives you back 12. So we can have it this way. And this is x equal to negative 4 plus or minus. Split this. We have this multiplied by 3 and is divided by 2. So this gives us x is negative 4 plus or minus, square root of 4 is 2, so we have 2 root 3i is divided by 2. This gives us x is equal to negative 4, we can use this 2 to divide each, plus or minus 2 root 3i divided by 2. We have x is, divide this, you have negative 2, this takes off, we have root 3i. And this gives us the second and third value of x. Now, remember we left a statement behind. So we need to recall we left a statement behind that x plus 3 cubed minus 2 cubed is also equal to 0. Now, what does this remind you of? It reminds you of your difference of 2 cubes. And it means for every a cubed minus b cubed is just a minus b into a squared plus ab plus b squared. So if you apply this identity on the above, we are going to have, so from here we are having x, this is our a, remember, this is our b. So we have x plus 3, then minus 2. For this, into our a is x plus 3, all squared, let's change this bracket. So we have this plus our AB is multiplying this. So we have 2 multiplies X plus 3 plus our B is 2. So we have 2 squared. And all these are equal to 0. Keep solving. X, 
subtract this, you have one into, let's expand this. Remember, you square this for every A plus B, like we said earlier, it is A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. So square this, you have X squared. Use 2 to multiply this. It gives you 2 times X times 3. Gives us 6X. Square our 3. Obeying this, and that gives us 9. Use 2 to distribute here. We have 2X plus 2 multiplies 3 gives us 6. Then 2 squared will give us 4. So this is what we have, and is equal to 0. So we are having x plus 1 into x squared. Add these two, it gives us 8x. 9 plus this plus this, this is 15. So we have 19 and is equal to 0. So remember, if these two are equal to 0, we can go with the first. This is equal to 0. To get x, take 1 from both sides. When you do that, x gives you negative 1. And this is the fourth value of x. Let's solve this. Solving this, we have x squared plus 18, 8x plus 19 is equal to 0. Now remember your formula. x is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So we're going to now have here yeah, our a is 1, our b is 8. And our C is 19. So we're going to plug it in this formula. So to have X is negative 8 plus or minus square root of 8 squared minus 4 multiplies. Our A is 1 multiplies 19. is divided by 2 times 1. And I hope you've already given us a like. Let's know what you feel about this class. Let's keep doing this to have x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus 8 squared gives us 8 times 8, which is 64. Multiply this, it gives us negative 76. Is divided by 2 times 1 gives us 2. So we now have x is negative 8 plus or minus. Subtract this, it gives us negative 12. Is divided by 2. So we have x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus. Remember, for simplifying this from the previous, we got 2 root 3i is divided by 2. Keep solving. x is equal to negative 8 divided by 2 plus or minus 2 root 3i divided by 2. So we have x is, divide this, you have negative 4. This cancels this, we have root 3i. And this gives us the fifth and sixth value of x. Now we're going to bring all the values of x together to have. The first value of x, we got negative 5. The second value of x gave us negative 2 plus root 3i. Then the third value of x is negative 2 minus root 3i. We have the fourth value of x gave us negative 1. The fifth value of x gave us negative 4 plus root 3i. And finally, the sixth value of x is negative 4 minus root 3i. And these are the six values of x, as we said we should have at the beginning. These two are the ones we call the real solution because they can be found on number line. And these ones are the ones we call the complex solution because they contain the real parts and the imaginary parts. And I hope you learned something. Don't forget to tell us how much. I'll also be curious to see your own method. And if you are still new to this channel, don't forget to give us a subscription. You are going to get a lot from us every day. Thank you. And don't forget to share for others to learn with you. See you in my next class. Bye-bye.